Okay, so sorry for not saying goodbye, but the line just cuts, of course. I should have looked at the time. I didn't look at it. I got carried away. All right, so if you have a question, I think you should be popping it out because now everything I'm talking about is the same thing being recycled. I can have, you know, this is the polar, you know, transverse, yeah, injection. I can have it normal because you see the axis of rotation of this plane is this way. Now, if it counts 90 degrees to the North Pole and South Pole, then I have a transverse case. Are you okay? Now, if I have it, yeah, also coinciding. So if I rotate the plane, it coincides with the axis of the earth, i.e. the axis of rotation of the earth, then I'm having a normal, you know, projection, polar projection. Yeah, I can just, okay, which is the party, MPP, yeah? Let's see if we can get our NDC somewhere. Um, not doing politics here. Yeah. So we can have the oblique, are you okay? So the oblique, then in that case, we have Oh. Yes, go ahead. And we can do, go ahead and ask me a question. I hear someone calling me. Can do the normal, oblique, conical, are you okay? And then I can have the transverse like that okay so it's possible to do this it's normal to do this you can do that you can draw the you know what you choose not choose okay. north pole south pole you should be able to just catch something like this very nicely not something you know so off, North Pole, South Pole, right? And then the axis of rotation is always going to be, here is coinciding, here is tilted, or here is 90 degrees, which is the transverse. So transverse is always the 90 degrees of rotation compared with the normal projection, is that okay? All right, so please, if you have any question, you can ask me because I think Basically, this is the, the special thing about the conical projection is that it's the only projection where they are, you know, we have a special condition where the cone actually cuts through the earth at two points, okay, at two latitudes, which we call the standard parallels or standard parallels. Standard. I told you that another word for latitude is parallel. parallel. Parallel, are <laughs> you okay? Take your time and pronounce that word. So we can have two standard parallels, all right? And then it cuts it at a point and where it, when, it, when we have that cut, then we call that, there's a name for it, call it second C, okay? Like I keep joking about it that in the key word for uh, catalysis, Second, you know, so second, it cuts it. Are you okay if you remember? So that's the latitude or the par the standard parallels. Is that okay? So they are actually phi one and then phi two. Remember that I said phi represents latitude and then lambda represents longitude. Are you okay? And then um, there's something we call the cone constant, which allows you to, you know. Oops, what am I doing? Okay, great. So we can actually have a cone constant. It determines how wide the cone is. Remember that the cone can be just flat, okay, almost oh, flat, or cone can be very, you know, long. So the angle here, you know, kind of determines 
how wide the cone is. So then so we have, my question. Yes, go for your question, please. Go for it. That. I can't wait to take your question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> go for it. With, with, with regards to the cone. Yes. With regards to the cone. That's right. Um, for the sun for the standard power to be created, I want to know whether the cone, the uh, the the earth, the globe, the, the globe inside the cone um, is is being tangential to uh, the, the the cone. Uh, and it doesn't, if it doesn't touch it. Cone, if, I'm asking because okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Mm -hmm. Finish up. Yeah, I'm. I'm asking because mm -hmm. if it is tangential, I want mm -hmm. to know that if it is tangential, definitely it, it should pass through only a point, mm -hmm. and those the, that particular point should be a coordinate system. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to know whether it is passing through the old, the one point that I'm assuming, or it is passing through more than one point because of the diagram that I saw above there. Okay. That's a good that's a good one. So we can see here that that's the equator. Okay. Now we can have just one, you know, standard parallel. So this is just one standard parallel. In that case, it's tangential. Okay. Let me write SP for standard parallel. So there's just one standard parallel. So this is the basic you know, conical projection that you can have, are you okay? And then you now do the projection and then, you know, you find out how the large shoes are being converted to your X and Y coordinates. Here it is touching, the cone is touching the earth at a particular point, are you okay? So from the center of the earth, we can draw a line to that point of tangency, the point of tangency. So I think Israel, you are really following this. You should become an expert in this area. But basically when you have the second C, that you have two mm -hmm. standard parallels. Are you okay? As above. Okay. Now in that case, then you have two points. It's not, it's not, it's not tangential. It's actually cutting through it. Are you okay? It's cutting through it. And so, but it's for a purpose. Well, let me let me just uh, explain that. I'll make I'll, I'll emphasize more, hit more on the word distortion. Is okay. It is the fundamental theory that we want to minimize distortion in every projection. Okay. So one of the objectives of having the two standard parallels and having the second C is is so that we can actually have you know, distortion minimized. Because you realize that as the surface of the earth departs from the developable surface, then you have distortion. Let me let me show an, an example to you. So as we, if you look at this one, all the points around here, okay, all the points, that are moving away from where we have just touched the earth, they start getting distorted in the final developer, developed surface. In the final developed surface, all points farther away from the point of tangency begin to you know, distend and then they are distorted. So let me give you an example of the US map. When you look at the US, the US probably isn't as big as you think. <laughs> we are talking about the two standard parallels and the tangency and the justification for having the you know tangency and then the second C. Are you okay? So second C is more or less like the, the opposite of tangency. Are you okay? The US isn't really as big as we think. Africa is probably bigger than the US. But we are made to think by looking at the maps that the US is what's bigger. Because look at where the US is. Are you okay? So if you actually do a projection of this place, you are tempted to actually look at it as if it is really like very big. Why? Because there's been a distortion, a distension. The whole thing is, um, is an enlargement. Are you okay? So to minimize this kind of thing where you get 
you know, deceived and fooled to think that an area is bigger than it's supposed to be and to conserve, you know, so we can talk about conformality, equivalency, and all those things are properties of maps that we want to actually, you know, minimize. So yes, I think you've really understood it. Basic, we want to have the, tan the, the basic concept is tangency. It should be touching it, is that okay? But then we actually want to cut a bit into it just so that we can minimize the error. I think I think it's, that's that. Does it does it kind of clarify? I don't know if it's clarified a bit. Yeah. Or is there more I have a follow up. A follow up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. A follow up question. Go ahead with your follow up. Question. Okay. Uh, with the US. Yeah. With the US map mm -hmm. that yes. you mentioned. Uh, regarding the distortion. Yes. Um, and uh, you, you you said it's it's. Uh, it's been it's small. I want to know whether the distortion uh, creates changes in the in the I'll say uh, the size of of the map, or it only reduces the size of the map. I want to know whether the distortion causes changes, or it rather causes a, a, a reduction. Okay. okay, okay. I think yeah. very good, very good, very good. Israel, you are really on point. I like you contribution and it's a question and a contribution at the same time. When you look at it, what we are doing with map projection is really a precarious process, but just convenient. Are you okay? Because we need to keep the earth as it is, okay? And then just work with what we have. But what we have is not convenient. We can't actually deal with longitude and latitude. No, because when you go to work, you don't work on a globe, you understand that? It's not convenient to work on a, you know, a, a spherical surface. So what we do is to do um, the projection so that we can work on a flat surface. So in our bit to do that, we've come up with the projection, which gives us that. So now this is our flat surface, beautiful. Okay, so now where does the distortion come in? That's your question. Okay, so the distortion, what, what it's actually doing is just, it's just making the line, something that's supposed to be like one kilometer begins to now look like, you know, something else. One kilometer is actually a thousand meters. With a distorted value, you could be having 999 meters. I'm intentionally using this value because I'm gonna touch on it again very soon in the next minute or two, I'm gonna be talking about this. Okay, so now the difference between this and this, this is reality, that's reality. That is after we have done a projection, are you okay? And so our what we, whatever it is that we have actually represented on the flat surface, the map is actually what distorted because now it's not going to look the same. Are you okay? Let's let me give you another example of. Or let me draw something to emphasize more. If I have something like this, and then finally it ends up looking more like this. Okay, where this and this antico, this this and this are antico. Then then you have a distortion. So. To distort is to warp, to distort is to change shape, to distort is to just make something look like what is it originally, you know, isn't. Make something look like something that it really wasn't originally. Are you okay? So, so that is the idea of distortion. And every map projection has a distortion, but the amount is what we are always concerned about. So we try to minimize, we, we, we don't try to get rid of distortion. It's gonna be in there, but we try to minimize it. Israel, are you, is it clearer to you? Yes, please, I'm okay, sir. All right, so you Thank only you, set the, you, you set the ball rolling for the next thing I'm gonna talk about, then we all close and we say goodbye and we go. So one of the, important things to know really before I even talk about what I want to talk about is the datum. It's important for us to realize that we're not only looking at, you know, objects and where they are, 
you know, I've been talking about lambda and phi, x and y, you know. So if someone is really paying attention, they'll go like, so what happened to that one, isn't it? The z. Engineers are very interested in that. We need to know, you know. So the key word there is the datum. Okay, so datum is the guy that we need, okay? We need this guy called datum. And what is the datum? So basically, if you talk about datum, if you want to really understand datum, start with something like the mean sea level. Are you okay? So the mean sea level is an example of a datum. It becomes a reference surface, are you okay? From which we can actually measure our height. Okay, but the mean sea level itself is subject to gravitational, you know, forces simply because the, you know, the, the mean, the, the sea itself is subject to gravity, are you okay, and gravitational pull and Newton's laws, are you with me? So it's the surface which is not even perfect, and yet mathematically we want to also, so we can have you know, the so-called geoid, well, <laughs> why do I like using the word so-called, and I need to really double check that. So the joidal surface, okay, exists. And then engineers and mathematicians and survey, survey engineers, eh, if you like, are also trying to fit an ellipsoid also to the F. So the F itself has its own shape, which we can draw. And yet we can have, which, you know, so the F is not perfectly spherical, okay? But we can fit a joidal surface, which is an extension of the mean sea level around the earth. And then we can also mathematically rigidly, as in the GPS coordinates that we have, also fit um, a spheroid to it. So these are called the datums. Are you okay? Datums or datum. Okay, so sphere, a spheroid. Spheroid. Okay, so that we can associate a certain, you know, flattening to it. So the earth is being modeled mathematically. Are okay? The earth, there's been a lot of efforts to model the earth mathematically in terms of shape. Remember that that these surfaces is they are the basis for me height measurement. They are the basis for height measurements. Okay, relative to it's very important to know the height of something relative to a certain common reference. And that reference is the datum. Please, I hope you are listening to what I'm saying. Anyway, you get a video, you can listen to me again, and then you understand it better. Yes, yeah, so that is the spheroid, uh, the datum. This is all I want you to know, take note of it. If we have what we call the WGS 84, so well geodetic, you know, system, if you like, or say, you know, 84. So you can imagine that it's probably established in the year 1984, where following the atrocities in Ghana, anyway, I don't want to do, go into uh, history and all that and everything that's going on in Africa. I'm always tempted, but let me just be in my lane, all right? So, um, yes, yeah, so that is day two for you, please, like I said. If you feel, oh, I don't get this idea, you always think about the mean sea level. And then what is it? You, you get to know. Any Anytime we measure a height, we are referring to the mean sea level. But for most projects being done in civil engineering, you assume a datum. Also have that in your mind, that there is a certain surface, you know, about which our project is based. Are you okay? So we can choose it so low that we can reduce all our points to that surface and then just implement the model. Are you okay? From our autocar model to the ground, okay? So let's talk about the last topic, then we are out of here. You can ask a question at the end of this one. You can touch on the datum if you're not sure. So don't worry. There we go. We're gonna talk about the UTM. Okay, what does the UTM stand for? It stands for the universal transverse mercator. All right, so I'm sure someone is asking, so what, what is this? Is he, is he sure what he's talking about? Yes, I'm sure what I'm talking about. 
um, universal because it's a system that we, we intend to implement everywhere you are on the surface of the earth. Transverse because it's actually the cylindrical transverse, the aspects, are you okay? It's cylindrical and it is also, are you okay? It's the aspects, the aspect is transverse. <laughs> I don't know if I'm, I'm actually jumbling words together here, but the person coming out with this particular projection is called Mercator. Of course, we have the Mercator, transverse Mercator, but the universal transverse Mercator specifically has been designed so that it provides, you know, coordinates on a global level. Everywhere you are, you can get a set of coordinates. All right. So, what are the characteristics? What are the characteristics? of the universal transverse Mercator. All right, so the first one, oops. First one is, a, it has a zonal system. So there are zones, the Earth is zoned, are you okay? So just imagine the whole Earth zoned into 60 parts, so you have strips going all the way around the earth and then back. Are you okay? So these zones, what will be the width of every zone? I need this answer from the class. I always get it from the class and I'm going to get it from this class. What is the width of every zone? If you have 60 zones going around the earth, what is the width of every zone, yes, I need someone to say, Tofik, Nanaya, yes, any of you, what is the width of the zone, so about Israel, you're not, you're not part, I think you have contributed enough, <laughs> yes, so Nanaya, what is the width of every zone, if you have 60 zones around the earth, so about, Remember that if we answer questions in class, you get one mark, isn't it? No, I'm just kidding. Yes, anybody? Okay, anybody at all, anybody at all. What is the width of a zone if you have 60 zones covering the whole earth? Class, okay, if you're not telling me, I'm gonna tell myself and then I'm gonna move on. All right, so since the earth going around, starting from one point and coming back to the same point, you know, in terms of angular distance, it's actually 360 degrees. So if I have 60 zones, then I divide the 60 degrees into, you know, six going to six, six degrees. So every width, width is six degrees. Uh, bad network, because of bad network, it takes forever for, you know, someone to even hear what I'm saying. All right, but it's okay. We get it. So the UTM also has distortion, you know, as follows. We're gonna talk about distortion in terms of the UTM. Is it good or bad? We are gonna find out, okay? So if we take each zone in the UTM, there's, gonna, there's always a central meridian. These lines do curve a bit. So we have a central meridian. Okay, at the ends, the zone edges, you have a scale factor of about 1.003, 1.003. Then at the middle, we have 0 0.9996 or so. Are you okay? Scale factor. So now, if you don't know what scale factor is, it's about time you go to primary school and then pick your book and then go and read on that. What is scale factor? The scale factor really tells us the enlargement. So, scale factor is always used when there's an enlargement. Are you okay? So, Israel, I want you to pay attention. I think you asked a question that related to the distortion. So, here, distortion, enlargement. Are you with me? Scale factor. They are all brothers. They are they are cousins, and they are working together to justify something. What does it mean? It means I have if I have 
one kilometer stretch on the ground, stretch of a road on the ground, if I project it using the UTM, then the distortion around the middle is going to be 1,000 times 0 0.99. Nine six, and uh, that's going to give me one two three nine uh, uh, nine nine point six meters. Okay, originally the length was a thousand meters, so a thousand meters minus nine nine nine. 0.6 meters. It means that whatever I'm looking at has changed. It's distorted by an amount of about 0 0.4 of a meter, which is really 40 centimeters. Is that right? 100 centimeters make one kilometer, one uh, meter. So one meter. <laughs> so um, one it shifted one step, shifted another step, 40 centimeters. So this is the so-called distortion. Israel, I think this is good for you. All right, so you, you can ask for that question. So this is on the distortion when it comes to UTM. Is that okay? So in the UTM, we also have a certain coordinate system. All the coordinate system in the UTM, the coordinates are actually in meters. So when you see um, UTM coordinates, whatever value you are looking at is in meters. It's as simple as that. You don't go and ask anybody. It's a system that has been developed. So you don't go and ask why, 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 why? Don't ask any why, why? If you see five, four, six. If I, this is a typical UTM coordinate, four, nine. This, without anybody telling you this is in meters, are you okay? All right. So. When we do the projection, we end up with meters. Okay. Now the coordinate system has a certain interesting origin that we need to also take note of. So if you take the earth, then the equator becomes, you know, if a set it gets a certain value depending on where you are. We set what we call the false eastern and then false northern. So false eastern, and then false northern. Okay, what are these? One may ask at this juncture. Okay. Are we good? I can't see myself. What does it mean? Does it mean people can see me? All right, doesn't matter. All right, so let's go on. So the force is the force northern. What are they? I'm gonna to explain to you what they are. So, like I said, if someone, if you're working in the so-called southern, <laughs> so-called again, southern hemisphere, English not my language. I'm not an Englishman. Northern hemisphere. Okay, so if you divide the earth into two halves, okay, in which the equatorial plane cuts the earth, becomes, you know, the cutting plane, then the top half is actually called the northern hemisphere. And then the southern half is called the southern hemisphere. Okay, now depending on which, which where you are, remember we, we said that even the, long, the longitudes and latitudes have this eastern, western, northern, southern, you know, values. So if you say two degrees east longitude, we know which part we're talking about, or 25 degrees north latitude, we know what we're talking about. Same thing happens here, that if we are actually working within the southern hemisphere, then our false northern is actually a value of about 10 million. 10 million meters. In fact, it's from this that we, we compute the coordinates to be in meters from this. Okay, so as we end this lecture on my projection,
this is the this is how far we are going. So please um, get ready with any queries you have. If you have, if you are down there, you give it a positive value of 10 million. If you are up there, we give it a positive value of zero meters. The equator receives this value. So we have two values for it, depend on where you are. Is that okay? Then within a particular zone, we can also associate a central, a false easting, yeah? So if this is a zone, so what I just drew, three lines, the center is the center of the zone, we can have a false easting of 500,000 meters. So this is the end of the lecture. You can ask any question that you have. If, if you don't understand origin, yeah? False system, false, false northern, these are the origins of a coordinate system. So, hello, hello, Ivan, hello, Ivan, yes. You have a question? I'm fine, sir. You have a question? Do you have a question, Ivan? Hello, sir. I just joined. Yeah, but you don't need to draw the attention to yourself, Ivan. We are here. We have a lecture here. Sorry about that. All right. So, please, your questions should follow. Yeah, please ask your questions if you have a question. If you don't, I think we are done. We are done. So, recapping, my projection is quite mathematical. Not quite. Yeah, it's mathematical. And we have the S coordinates being a function of phi lambda and phi. The Y coordinates is also a function of lambda and phi. Are you okay? So typically in the UTM, the formula for UTM. Are you okay? It encompasses a natural log. Are you okay? So it's, a, you know, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give you a material. I'll show you that this is a formula. There's a formula that simply converts the input is a longitude and a latitude. And then the output, are you okay? Is an X and Y, simple as that. The rest are just functions. Are you okay? That allow you to, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't remember it off it, but yes. Lane turn and you know you get fee, you know on two plus you know some some and then something like that. So it's a function that allows you to now convert your la your latitude to x coordinate and then um, your longitude to also to y or s coordinate. Is that okay? Okay. So if you don't have any question i think today we like i said we talked about different things so it depends on where you are and um how your understanding is of the topic we will end it here i believe you'll be having your mid semester tomorrow i'm wishing you the best